I'm Sally Russell. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Hick Talks. Welcome to Helsingborg. This is a podcast series in English, which is designed to demystify the city of Helsingborg for all its international residents. In this episode, we interview Dennis Nilsson, press and media manager for the local culture department and project leader for the Culture Card. Hi, Dennis. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, well, we really appreciate your time. Thanks very much. It's really good to have you here because we were trying to decide how to give an overview of Helsingborg's attractions in just one podcast episode and realised that the best thing was probably to focus on the culture card or culture court. But before we start talking about that, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you from Helsingborg originally? No, I'm not actually. Born and raised in Norrköping, a city about the same size as Helsingborg, uh, mm. located 15 Swedish miles south of Stockholm. But I've been living in Helsingborg for 17 years now, so proud to call this home. <laughs> okay, that sounds yeah. good. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. And well, my name is Dennis. Uh, I'm a press and media manager at the culture department at Helsingborg Municipality. I'm also the project leader of the Culture card or culture card. And uh, well, that's the reason for why I'm joining you today. Lovely. Thank you very much. That's perfect. Have you been with the municipality for long? I would say so, yes. 10 years and counting. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> mo- mo- most of the time at the culture department. Okay. All right. So you're really kind of steeped in all the, the cultural life then. You know what's happening. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds great. Good. So to me, it seems like the culture card is the easiest and most cost effective way of accessing cultural life in Helsingborg. Do you think that's correct? Yeah, I don't think my answer to that question comes as a surprise. But yes, (laughs) I I, I, I do think that the culture card is the easiest and most cost effective way. Definitely. But I also think that is the best way, really, to explore a lovely city. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's probably too easy a question for you, I think, to start off with. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and when was it introduced? It was introduced in 2009, and it started off as a mission to the culture department from the culture board. They wanted us to find a way for the culture institutions to coexist and cooperate at a higher level. And, of course, with a purpose to increase the value for the people interested in culture happenings in Helsingborg. And so, yeah, the culture code was born. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Good. Thank you. What are the main benefits of the card? There are plenty of benefits, really. To make it easy, you can say that the culture card contains two benefit groups. The first, free entrance to the culture institutions in Helsingborg. The second is special prices on tickets at our partners that give the culture card holders very percentage of the regular prices. Mm. Okay, mm. All right, good. And which institutions can we visit with the culture card? Culture card holders have free entrance to Dunkers Culture House, Shannon, Frederickstown Museum and Gardens, Sophia Road yeah. Castle and Gardens, and the Sports Museum as well. And the cardholders also get, as I said, uh, special prices at our many partners, but to mention a few, the Concert Hall, the City Theatre, Radakvarn Cinema, the cafes situated at the culture institutions, the ferries, Sundsbassana, <laughs> that takes you to Denmark, and also the Museum of Shipping and the Orison's Aquarium in Helsingør, Denmark. Okay. Uh, so that's a few, a few of them, and the others, mm. obviously, you can find them on our webpage. Yeah, thank you. I didn't realise that it was also for the uh, Maritime Museum in Helsingor and, and the aquarium. That no, that's really good. And I know it, it is. It does seem to be really probably the absolute best way because you get your money back quite quickly, don't you? Effectively, you. I think by the time you visited somewhere uh, twice or something, you, you've effectively paid for the card. Yeah. Is that Absolutely. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, looking at the value you get for the money. Yeah. It's not expensive, not even close. Mm. Uh, mm. A, a regular card costs 445 and it's the card for members age 18 to 64. Yeah. And there's also a student card that costs 250 kroners. Mm. And also for people aged 65 or older, it costs 295. So 
I mean, if you look at the entrance fees at the institutions during the, for example, the busy season, it's around 100 kroners. So yeah. if you, for example, want to pay a visit to Sophia Rowe or Frederikstal and maybe the city land box, Shannon, uh, you already earned your money spent up at, mm. uh, on the culture card. So, mm. And what you shouldn't forget is that the culture card is also valid for a whole year. Uh, which yeah. gives you plenty of time to visit these fabulous places and <laughs> as many times as you would like to. Yeah, that's fantastic. Is that is it a calendar year or is it um, just a year from when you take it out? It's from a year uh, from uh, where you take it out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm, I also want to give a heads up because last year uh, we introduced another member to our culture card family, <laughs> the, the summer culture card. It has the same benefits, at least, as the regular card, but it's it costs less and are only valid during the summer months. That's about uh, it that I can say for right now because the details are to be set. But I just got a message right now that it will happen this summer as well. So mm. for people that are interested in the culture card, this might be a good opportunity to to give it a try um, yeah. for the summer months. Um, yeah. It's a good opportunity. Yeah, fabulous. That sounds really useful, doesn't it? And like you say, it's perhaps a good way of trying it out to begin with. And um, yeah, 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 true. Yeah, uh, and especially, I mean, during these uh, tricky times that we are in, hopefully our society will be more open and safe by that time as well mm. uh, during the summer. Mm. So this uh, might be a good idea. Yeah. Yes, at least that is one positive spin-off from the pandemic that we're all starting to think a little bit more about our own backyards and staycations and visiting what's around us and just being a tourist in our own city again, which I think is always important, isn't it? It's good to get to know where you live and and make the most of it. So in some ways, I think you shouldn't explore further until you really know your own area really well. And there's certainly certainly a lot more that I need to visit locally. So that'd be good. Thank you. Fantastic. Good. Um, And I also noticed that there's an app now. So how does that work for people? Yeah, indeed. We, are, we have an app, and of course, with the same name, Kultur Kultet, and it's uh, to be found at Google Play or App Store, and it's free. Mm-hmm. And with the app, you're able to bring your card with you at all times uh, in your smartphone. It's obviously uh, convenient for you, and it's <laughs> definitely but for the nature. And the thing about the app, is it also includes a calendar, uh, so you can keep track of all the culture happenings that the institutions and our partners arrange day by day. Okay, so you just you can just bring up the app and see what's happening if you've just got a free day or yep. looking for something to do at the weekend or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. Sounds perfect. Good, good. So how do you think that COVID has affected cultural life in Helsingborg? Yeah, well, this pandemic has affected of, uh, all of mm. us in, in many ways. Uh, both good, but mostly bad, of course. Many of the institutions have been closed for visitors for months now, and that, of course, has rocked about not being able to give our visitors mm. what, what they want and not being able to work on what we do usually. But with these kind of crises, you also get created in some way. We found many different ways to bring culture to the people instead of the opposite. And I, I think that institutions will keep on doing that until the day when we can go back to living life a, mm. just a bit more normal. But I'm also certain that many of the alternative ways that we found during this year I think delivering the culture to those interested will uh, still be seen as a good way to consume happenings uh, when the pandemic is over, really. So so I think we will keep on doing these things as well. Um, But I also want to mention that for two of our uh, our, um, biggest culture institutions in in the city, Sophia Royal Castle and Castle Gardens and Frederickstall Museum and Gardens, they actually opened this Easter. So good. So, so that's a good thing. Uh, and I mean, it's obviously because it's huge, green, blooming areas outdoors. Mm. So that's the reason why it can open for season. But still, the areas and the arrangements are adjusted to the most uh, this difficult yeah. situation that we're still in. Yeah. Now, I mean, we are lucky, I think, to have these these lovely places just so close to us in Helsingborg. I mean, Sofia is mm. always beautiful to walk around, even when there's not much happening. In the winter, you know, when it's quiet. And now that we're in late spring, everything's coming to bloom. It's absolutely lovely. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to a visit soon. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And Frederick Stahl, I haven't been there quite so much lately. I, I love one of my favorite things at Frederick Stahl, I think, is the Mikolai Mud in September because oh, yeah. it's late September. It's there's usually still really nice weather. It's really busy. So I know the best thing to do is go by bus or walk or park yeah. at a distance and walk if you possibly can. But it, it's just a really nice thing to go to. And let's hope that this year we can have that again. It'll be really nice to see. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's mm. hope so. Yeah, and also the Christmas things that they do at, at the different institutions. is There's always mm. such a nice feel, I think. You feel as if you're really entering the sort of Swedish traditions and Swedish customs when you go along to the Yule Mark now, perhaps, or, mm. or the, the nice events they have at Sofia, especially for the kids as well, when they can go and toast yeah. marshmallows or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's really yeah. enjoyable. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I noticed as well that the concert hall is doing some symphony orchestra things by digital stream or like live streaming, aren't they? So yeah, that they sounds do. really yeah, interesting. Yeah, they do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a good opportunity, I think. It's an alternative to <laughs> when we can go live and, and see the music live. Of course, that is a, a way better <laughs> in, many, in many senses. But no, I, I think it's a good alternative for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It, it gives a lot more people access, doesn't it? So it can only be a good thing from that point of view. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so do you have any personal favourite places to visit? Oh, way too many, Sally. Uh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, it, it kind of depends on who I'm with, I would say. Mm. If I'm spending time with my kids, then we go to Frederickstall to see all the animals and uh, have a picnic in the garden. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if I'm spending time with my girlfriend, uh, I'll say we'll walk through Sophia Road Castle and Gardens and have maybe something nice to eat and drink. The yeah. mo- most amazing view of Arizona at, at the restaurant that is behind the castle. It is. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, and if I would spend time with my mates, uh, I will probably go to Dunkers or maybe the concert hall, uh, mm. for that matter, to experience some live music, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. I think one of my favourite things that I've seen at Dunkers was a photographic exhibition a few years ago, uh, which was, I think her name was Vivian Mayer, and she was a nanny living in the States, and she took thousands of photographs. And it was, a, I think it was actually a worldwide exhibition. I know I'd read about it in the British press. So to see that here in Helsingborg, and to see the amazing images that she'd taken, of sort of street life in in those times and back in the twenties was was really quite staggering. So I, that was a particularly good one. I know I enjoyed that. Mm. Have you been to any concerts um, at Sofiaru? Uh, yeah, I have uh, many. <laughs> yeah, many. And actually, I live quite close by. So mm. I usually uh, during the summer times when the, the big concerts are going on, uh, we can actually sit on the porch and listen as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's ideal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, yeah. but it, it's, real, it's a really nice place. I mean, it, it, it's big and it's, you know, blooming and it's summertime. you got your picnic baskets with you, great live music. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great venue to go to if you like uh, live music. Yeah, yeah. And we were really thrilled to be able to see people like Sting there and Bob Dylan, uh, Mark Knopfler. Yeah, but, you know, just to see some of the big names that have been here. I missed a few, unfortunately, that I would like to have seen. Like A real treat, I think, to be able to have somebody like, you know, the stature of Bob Dylan. It was really great. (laughs) Yeah, they they had some uh, big names during the years. So, yeah. Mm. no, it's a, it's a great place to go and see yeah. the music, definitely, for sure. Yeah, that's quite special. Mm. Okay, so, Dennis, finally, what are your top tips for people who are new to Helsingborg? Mm. Uh, well, my top tip has to be get a culture card. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, it, it helps you to explain explore the city's most wonderful places really it helps you to meet people to be active and i mean once you've fallen in love in our beautiful city then you can go over and over again since yeah it's valid for a year yeah so yeah it has to be get a culture card <laughs> perfect <laughs> no brainer all right then that's that's lovely thank you thank good you. thank you so much it's really nice to speak to you again today and we really appreciate it so i hope everyone's going to go out and get a coach card if they haven't already got one 
Oh, let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Sally. It's great to be on yeah. your show. And I uh, hope to see you and maybe some of the listeners at our culture place once this society opens a bit more. Definitely. Let's yeah. hope for the best. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks very much to Dennis. Next time, we'll be talking to Anders Lansbo, project manager of H+, the project to build 5,000 new homes and redevelop some of the areas of Helsingborg. And thank you too for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, thank you to the Vision Fund for their support in making this podcast series possible. If you'd like to know more about HIC, you can find us at www.hiconnections.eu. On social media, you'll find us on Instagram at HI Connections and on Facebook and LinkedIn, we're at Helsingborg International Connections. We'd love to hear what you think, so please get in touch. <laughs>